if you listen to other people's ideas, you'll often come up with a better one. And if you're not sure about something, it's easier to ask a classmate than a teacher sometimes. I like lessons more when you get to actually talk instead of writing it down. I find it easier to say it out, put my opinion, even if it's against someone else's opinion. I do enjoy giving opinions instead of straight answers because it's a chance to be different from everybody else. You can't have a wrong answer because there's, it's an opinion. And if you learn other people's opinions, it means that you can <clears throat> look at things two different ways. Pupils at South Milford Primary School near Selby enjoy talking. In fact, they've been encouraged to do it on a daily basis during lessons. Dialogic talk is the essence of personalised learning. It develops your ability to think at a different level, at a higher level, to articulate those thoughts and empowers you because of that to take ownership of your learning. Oh, right, yeah, now there's a good point. If you drink, you're always swaying around. That's true. Or it could be that the highwayman only arrives a day later, so they probably recovered. <laughs> That's right, because they didn't actually kill him immediately, did they? People said, but we all talk, we all do speaking and listening. Really? Yes, but there's a hierarchy of talking in a classroom, and this is something a little bit different. Year 6 teacher Leslie Denon has been the lead practitioner for Dialogic Talk since the project was set up in North Yorkshire six years ago. Uh, Kirsten? Um, I like, really think that Tim might have told him to do that because he does love them, but she, he knows that they're, them two are in love, so he might try and get revenge on her as well. Oh, my goodness, that is mega thinking. That's really expanding a lot of what Christian's saying. Once the penny dropped that it was very much hands-on practice um, rather than dusty research, then I think most of us were really up for it. I've just joined South Milford as a year one, two teacher. When I applied for the job at South Milford, Dialogic Talk was all over uh, the application form. So prior to even applying for this job, I had to research Dialogic Talk and that took me towards personalised learning, uh, assessment for learning. I approached Leslie to help me, really, to give me some pointers of where to go with Dialogic Talk. A uh, bit baffled by the Dialogic Talk. <laughs> it sounds complicated, but it's not. OK. Dialogic is the, is the cornerstone of all of the personalised learning that's going on in schools. Right. If you think about the things that you're already doing, you've probably already got talk partners. Use, yeah, of, yeah, use of yeah, talk partners yeah. where they're talking to each other and respecting each other's opinions. Right. A, a lot of that is basically underpinned by this concept of dialogic. So I'm encouraging the children just through discussion? Very much so, them. but it, it becomes then uh, slightly stronger than discussion. Right. What we've done so in the past, mean, certainly, yeah, the as far as helping professional yeah. development, etc., is where the teacher has a go at filming in the lesson where they think they're going to have a go at some sort of dialogic right. type questioning. I'll have a look at it with you as um, <laughs> in, in teacher speak as a critical friend. Excellent. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> now, I'm going to help you a little tiny bit and we're going to see if we can improve because when we're watching each other later, your job is to see if you can suggest ways that your friend can improve. And you're going to be looking with your eyes to what they're doing and suggesting different ways of moving. Right, girls. Off you go. Any suggestions, comments or questions you want to ask these children? Um, Daniel here yeah, had a smiley face when he was doing it and can you see he has a quite sad face? Can anybody tell me something different? They, they, were, they were trying their best to do it at the same time. Does anybody agree? Yeah. yeah. That, that's really an interesting bit, because up till then, you were doing some good open-ended, uh, explain why they were good, does anyone, you know... But then you, then you did, does anyone agree? Mm. So you closed it again. 
Ah, oh, right. <laughs> so Close. that's that's yeah. the signal for well, we're finished. Okay. Challenges for me is getting your head around it. Where do you start? What element do I need to work on first? And and breaking it up and just taking a step back and thinking, okay, we'll just work yeah, on we'll one step at a time and accepting it as a new challenge and taking on the support. The video technique is clearly useful as a CPD tool for staff. But filming pupils as they speak and discussing it later also helps make dialogic talk work in the classroom. Dialogic talk essentially is something that's shared. It's an experience where I'm saying I'm not the dominant person in the class, where Effectively, I respect your opinions, I want to hear them, and I'm going to respond to them. So there's a safe ethos in the class of just because I'm the teacher doesn't mean that I'm right all the time. And lots more of you will be doing it, and you'll be chipping in, you'll find that you won't actually even use me as the go-between. <coughs> a little bit of that was coming on already, wasn't it? Which is lovely to do. The subject chosen to prompt discussion in today's class is the early 20th century poem, The Highwayman, by Alfred Noyes. What I want to do now is really get stuck into some more of The Highwayman. Suppose that you could change any part of the narrative before the ending. How would you modify this poem? Talk to the person next to you to see if you can come up with something, and then I'll get back to you. Maybe if you had, uh, you know where she kills herself? Instead of the high woman coming back, the high woman stays where he is, so that King George's men never get to him. That's just one way, that, like Katie said, that is actually one way to get to him. And she's stupid for getting in love with him. So I think that's why. Yeah. They know that the high woman needs to know that Beth is there. So he's got, going to definitely come back to her yeah, to check on her. Like, um, because he promised her that she's got to come, but he's going to come back with the yellow go before the morning light. Yeah, and he might not know that she's tied up. Right, folks. Now then, Will, what about you and Lydia? What have you come up with? We shouldn't have let Bess die because it wasn't her fault. She just loved the highwayman. So if you don't want Bess to die, how could we have changed things? Kieran. Um, from when Bess is getting gagged, um, the highwayman could get off his horse and there could be like some ladders up the um, house and he climbs up there and he could shoot King George's men and then save Bess. Kirsten. It would be quite good if um, she got untied somehow, she finally got free mm -hmm. and got the gun and killed him herself. She ki who would she kill? The King George's men. All those soldiers? Yeah. Wow, so she would become um, not a tragic heroine, but a, 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 an almost a superwoman. Yeah. Cameron, you had an idea with Jack, did you? We could have it so that Instead of Tim the Ostler informing the king mm -hmm. and getting him to send his men, we could have him going to try and kill the highwayman himself and getting himself killed. That's a great idea that Cameron and Jack have had. If it's going to be reciprocal with children, it has to be with me too. In fact, it more so with me. And I think this is what concerns some teachers, that you might not be in control of the lesson or where the lesson's going or you might not be in control of what the children are doing but the truth and is when you're talking to the children and you listen to what yeah. they're saying you actually think of better Jack things saying, so working on the hoof is quite exciting i think that they just thought oh we'll steal like one pint to bail and stuff and then they've gotten drunk and gone a bit too far and because they're drunk they've not realised what they're doing to Bess and right. they probably didn't mean to do it that badly. It's just that they probably said, oh, we'll just have one pint each and then because they're slightly drunk, they'll get another. And... But do you think the drink would have influenced them tying her up in front of the window, Christian? Coming back to you. But how would they have got the right target to shoot her if they were drunk? Oh, right, yeah. Now there's a good point, isn't it? I don't think the highwayman should have died, but I think Bess kind of could have, um, because 
she sacrificed herself, and that's quite a big part of the poem, to save it, to save um, the highwayman. But if these were real people, would you still say the same answer? Mm. I don't know. Well, I don't. I, I want. To, I want. I think this is a. This is a, uh, This isn't something I've written down to plan to ask you. I'm, I've just thought of it now because I'm responding to what you've said. This is just the sort of thing that we're really working well on, where you're clearly listening to each other. I don't think you can do personalised learning, assessment for learning, creativity, and excellence and enjoyment without being able to articulate your thoughts and develop your thoughts. At this early stage with her class, Leslie mediates the discussion. Her aim is to withdraw gradually from leading the class. To help the pupils to learn to talk successfully to each other, she gets them to watch video clips of the discussion. She hopes they'll realise that all opinions are worthwhile. The last time we were doing some talking together, what we were doing was I was filming while we were talking about the highwaymen. And what I want to do this afternoon is look at little snippets of that. He knows that he's going to get caught someday, and he hasn't got there, so there's nothing really left on him. Could we just pick up another gorgeous young lady from somewhere? I'll tell you something I think that I want to work on more with you is I still feel like I'm the one who's very much um, leading it. So that's something that I really want to um, develop more with you. Um, but what I did like... Go on, Cameron. I just put my hand up because everybody else was doing it and it wouldn't be right if somebody was just saying everything all the time because they were saying it without going through you when everybody else was doing it like that's that's because we're still at the early mm. stages at the start of the year and and that will get we'll get better at that won't we all right now let's have a look at something else i think that's a really good point that you're making there that um you can't say that one person is better than another therefore they deserve to be saved and the others deserve to die an excellent point I'm just going to stop it again there. Is that helpful to listen to other people's ideas and opinions like that? What do you think about that? Well, yes, it is because you, you can, in a way, you can sort of get to understand people better. Okay, Katie. It's interesting to see what other people think about what you think. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of getting somebody else his opinion on your opinion. I like the way you put that, getting somebody else's opinion on your opinion is a nice way to, to say that. To people who are watching and who are thinking, personalised learning? Can't do it. Dialogic talk? What's that? You're doing it already. Just listen to what you're doing and it really, really opens your eyes to how you can extend how you speak, how you listen and how you engage the children.